Hello everyone and welcome to our video on how to make berry ink. My name is Natalie and I work in the collection care department in the National Archives. For a visual introduction, I am wearing a short sleeved grey t-shirt. I have short dyed blonde hair that has been swept back with a black hairband. And in the video where I make the ink, I'm wearing a long sleeve top that's blue and white stripes. I'm wearing a black apron and I'm also wearing some blue gloves. So to celebrate British Science Week, we have created a couple of activity packs for families to try at home, um, all about inks and colors. Now throughout the ages, civilizations have made inks and paints from a variety of different materials, such as trees, insects, metals, or something called lamp black, which is a type of suit that is a product of fire. Now an ink can be a simple mixture of pigment and water, such as ancient Roman ink that was a mixture of soot and water, or they can be very complex mixtures, such as iron gall ink that was um, create, made from oak galls, iron salts, resin and water. And an oak gall is a knot that forms in a oak tree when a certain species of wasp tries to burrow in and lay its eggs. Iron gall ink was the most popular ink used in Europe from the 12th to the early 20th century, but the materials were very expensive. So people would sometimes find other materials that were more accessible to make ink out of, such as flowers, nuts, charcoal, or berries, which is what we're making today. So what I've set up here today is an experiment that anyone can do at home to make berry ink. One suggestion is to use blueberries like we're doing today. So to make our ink, we need a saucepan and a hob, or in my case, a hot plate. At one point in the recipe, we're going to have to strain the berries. So I have a sieve and I also have a piece of uh, cooking muslin. We have one cup of blueberries that we'll use, and this is equal to around 150 grams. We have a potato masher and a large spoon. We also have a bowl that we'll use. And we're also going to add white vinegar to the mixture and the white vinegar will help the ink hold its color. And we're also going to add some salt and the salt will act as a preservative, which makes sure that the ink won't go moldy. We have a small bottle to keep our ink in. And finally, we have something to write on, in my case a paper, and something to write with. And I'm using a paintbrush, but you can also use a toothpick as well. To start off with, we want to first heat the berries, which will help release their juices and their water. And because we're using a hob, make sure to ask your adult to help you with this bit. We want to heat up the berries on a low to medium heat for about five minutes, making sure that the berries don't burn. And while we're heating up the berries, we're going to use our potato masher and we're going to help release the juice and the colors and crush the berries in the pan very lightly. And this juice and water that you're releasing will actually form the pigment of the ink that will give the ink its color. All right, so once you have heated up your berries and crushed it with the potato masher, you should end up with this really nice um, berry pulp. And don't worry if you have some skins or seeds in, in this pulp, this is what the sieving process is gonna take care of. We don't wanna burn ourselves, so we're going to set the pulp aside for about 20 minutes and then continue on with the recipe. Once the berries are cool, we want to sieve them and this will get rid of all the seeds and the skins and things left over from the blueberries. So we want to take our bowl and we want to place the muslin cloth, if you have one, over the bowl and then our sieve over the muslin cloth. And here we'll use our big spoon to take the berry pulp out of the pan, like so. There we go. 
and we're going to press the spoon against the sieve and then this will help make sure all the juices go down into the muslin. Okay, so once you think you've gotten all the juices out, what you'll be left with in the sieve is the kind of like the skins and the seeds and the things that are too thick for the ink. Okay, then you want to just put that to the side. And I'm using a piece of muslin as a second strain to just get rid of that extra bit of skin. And this is the really messy part. Ugh. There we go. And then you should end up with a really, really nice, smooth kind of pulp that will form your ink. You can see here that I have some berry juice on my gloves, so I'm glad I wore them. So I'm going to put the berries into a clear bow so you can see what I'm doing next. Take back my spoon. There we go. Okay. So once we have our juicy pulp in a bowl, we want to add a couple of teaspoons of vinegar and the vinegar will help the ink hold its color. There we go. We also want to add a teaspoon of salt and the salt acts as a preservative which will stop the ink from going moldy. So once you've added everything you just want to mix the, the pulp together and make sure the salt and the vinegar have dissolved. Okay, so next it is time to bottle up our ink. So I'm using a funnel because the opening to my bottle is quite small and I don't want to spill anything. And there you have it. We have some of our very own berry ink. So the berry ink doesn't last very long, so you want to make sure that you store it in a cool, dry place and make sure the lid is on really tight when you're not using your ink. So I hope you enjoyed making berry ink today with me. Um, today we used blueberries, but you can also use different kinds of berries like raspberries, blackberries, or even cherries. And the different berries will create a different colored ink. So to sign off, I am going to write a message in my berry ink. I should have said goodbye.